All right, for today's industry insight, I want to talk about a topic I saw over on Polygon the other day regarding messy games. This was written essentially as a response to people ignoring or outright just refusing to play games that came out with a few blemishes or problems on them. And the article talked about kind of how video games can be related to TV and film, and they, the author also went into discussions regarding Mass Effect Andromeda and the problems that it had during launch, and what kind of led to the eventual downfall of that game in terms of post-release support. However, the idea of calling games messy as a way of, I guess, softening the blow or... I'm not even quite sure how to put it. More or less... Oh man, this is a tough one. But more or less trying to, I guess, downplay the problems of a game, I have a few issues with. And there's two key parts I want to talk about from the article. And if you didn't read it, it will be listed in the description below. But the first part that the author talked about was the idea of comparing video games to film and TV. Now, this is a common and very popular analog when it comes to the game industry because just like as there are a very wide variety of game studios there are of course a very wide variety of TV shows and film we have on one of the spectrum you know the multi-million dollar triple-a blockbusters and then we have the independent side and it's the same over here we have studios that are made up of hundreds of employees spread across multiple continents and millions of dollars of technology and work go into them and then we have games made by like two or three people in their home office during their part-time hours. And what the author talked about was how even though we have that wide berth, there are still people who enjoy, I guess, quote-unquote, the C-list or D-list movies. You know, the sci-fi channel stuff, the cheesy movies, you know, things that you knew or you just know were never meant to be this massive blockbuster, no one working on this is going to be winning an Emmy or an Oscar anytime soon. Unfortunately, I don't think this works when it comes to the game industry. And the reason is twofold. First, when it comes to TV and film, there is essentially two halves to any production. You have the actors and actresses on screen, and of course you have the behind the scenes, the writing, the cinematography, the score, the direction, and whatnot. And in many cases, if one half of the equation isn't working properly or is, bad, is worse than the other, sometimes the other half can bring it up or make it watchable. A major part of, of course, you know, cheesy movies is watching actors and actresses give it their all. Or having someone with such a unique personality or just bringing like that certain special touch to the film. You know, actors like Bruce Campbell, Robert Unglund, and pretty much you can insert a lot of the big name uh, horror movie stars of the 80s here. But the point is, even if the movie itself is cheesy and the special effects suck, the actors and the actresses can sometimes elevate it. And on the flip side, you can have a movie that has amazing music, you know, beautiful cinematography, and a fantastic story, but maybe the actors and the actresses aren't the best for those roles. But in this case, the movie's technical side kind of carries it through. Now, with that said, though, that doesn't work when it comes to video games. You're never going to hear someone say, I hate the gameplay and the story, but those models are just so well-defined that it makes it all worth it. And... When it comes to video games, we don't have that buffer because a video game is an experience that we have to sit through. We're not just, you know, turning our minds off, sitting in front of the TV and watching Sharknado or anything like that. When a game has massive issues and problems, we have to wade through that. Be it, you know, models that don't look right, gameplay that's bugged or simply doesn't work, or even just technical issues like crashes, freezes, and so on. The point is, we can't turn our brains off to issues in the same way that we can, you know, sit on, sit and watch TV at like 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and hate watch some kind of show. 
Now, the other point the author talked about is the difference in quality and scope of games. And they compare stuff like Mass Effect Andromeda to Earth Defense Force or Deadly Premonition. And if you've never heard of Earth Defense Force, definitely look that one up because it's a hoot. But this is the other major part and why I have some problems with this article. Now, when it comes to video games, I may not have a first-hand experience in terms of managing budgets, but I am very certain that the amount of time and money that went into Earth Defense Force is considerably less than the amount of time and energy that went into Mass Effect Andromeda. And this has always been one of the major differences between Indie and AAA, or in Earth Defense Force, AA and AAA. That the higher we go, the more weight and the more resources that get put into a product, which also corresponds or represents the amount of quality that we as a consumer expect out of it. We've talked about this before with the idea of what is a AAA game? But the point is, if someone is spending $60 on a game, there is a lot higher expectations compared to buying a $5 game, $3, or even a free-to-play one. And I have a better analogy than film to TV. I see this more along the lines of a food truck versus a five-star restaurant. Both places are serving food, but one has considerably more resources and options available to them than the other. Now, when I go to a five-star restaurant, I know I'm going to be paying a lot of money. But with that said, though, I expect my meal to be flawless. If I, whatever I order, it better be damn good. And of course, I expect food to be, you know, cooked properly, highest grade ingredients, and so on. And of course, if I go there and I have a great time, that's great. Now, if I go to a food truck, I know I'm not getting five star, a five star meal or a five star service. They're not going to set up their own little mini restaurant in front of the food truck. But what I order, I still expect to get a good meal. Am I expecting five star quality? No. But in the same breath, I expect a certain level of standard. If I'm going to eat at a food truck, I better not get food poisoning or get undercooked meat or anything like that. And when we talk about what is and what isn't a good video game, this is a topic way too big for a single video. But for today's purpose, one of the foundations, in my opinion, of what makes a video game good is did the developer accomplish what they set out to make? And I know that sounds very simple, but there's a lot that goes into that. If a developer promises me a challenging platformer that's going to test every one of my skills, and I get a game that is basically baby's first platformer, I'm going to be very annoyed. Likewise, if I buy a video game, I go to load it up and the entire thing doesn't work, I'm going to be equally annoyed. The point is, what the developer promises has to be what I'm getting. And this is why this argument of messy games doesn't work, especially in Mass Effect Andromeda. Now, I didn't play the game and I don't have first-hand experience with the series, but I've heard from enough people who have played it who found it very disappointing in production values, the story in some aspects, and of course just the overall package. Now, there's a lot that goes into unpacking what happened with it that we're not going to get into today. But, whatever the case may be, what was promised was not delivered. Now, this may be surprising for a lot of you who are longtime fans, because you know I have played a huge variety of indie games of varying states of quality and completion. But I wouldn't call any one of those games messy, because it just seems like a shield to deflect criticism and say, oh, you can't complain about this game, it's a messy game, or we need to look beyond the problems. And while that is fair to a certain point, when it comes to the independent space, I have seen some of the most unique games I have ever played. Now, they may not be completely polished and refined, but they still held to a certain standard. Am I expecting a $5 indie game to give me 500 hours of content and, you know, 6 to 12 months of post-release support? No. But... If I buy your game with the promise of game a challenging roguelike, I expect to get a challenging roguelike. And I'll give you some examples of what I'm talking about. 
This past week, I played, or by the time you're watching this, maybe last week, I played through Super Hydra from Locomaltio. And what was the intention was to create an elevated take of the shmup genre. No more, no less. And I played through that, and it was great. Everything in the game was on point, and to me, this was a success. Does it have 500 hours of gameplay, and am I expecting months of support? No. Because what was uh, the expectations were met. Now, with that said, though, the challenge and why there's a lot of this argument is about what happens when games aren't 100% perfect. And this is where we run to that issue of what I just said. Did the developer do what they promised? And if they didn't, why, where was that problem, essentially? And I'll give you another example of this. The game Hinterland that I did a dissecting design on, it may be one of my favorite games I've ever played, but it's also a game that I can't recommend due to those problems. Now, this wouldn't be a case of a messy game. Whatever they wanted to put into it, they did. The problems came with what in terms of delivery. In, in this case, it was ARPG and city building design that didn't really match the expectations. And there are plenty of examples of games that fail to meet those expectations, be them from early access, Kickstarter, or even just a straight up AAA game that underperformed. I mean, another big example would be something like Goddess, which maybe at some point I could do a massive talk on that and just, you know, unload. But the point is, calling a game messy just seems like deflecting from those issues. And a good game is a good game. Whether it is a $3, you know, simple match 3 game, or a $60 grand online multiplayer first person shooter. But the point is, if the developer didn't meet the expectations, that is not the same as delivering what you wanted, but at a smaller scale compared to everyone else. Going back to the Earth Defense Force Mass Effect Andromeda example, Earth Defense Force was designed no more, no less, for that exact experience. Could they have added more to it? Of course, every game could always use more content and development. But what they set out to make, what they advertise, is what was delivered. And that's not the same as a AAA game making promises and expectations and just failing on that front. And again, even doubly so by the fact that we're talking about a AAA franchise. Like I said with the food truck and restaurant analogy, if a food truck, if I buy something, you know, for two, three dollars and it's an okay meal, okay, you know, I got my money's worth. If I buy, if I go to a five star restaurant and get a sixty, seventy dollar bill and the food was horrible, that's a different story because the expectations that I have and what was promised were not met. And this is why I think this argument over supporting or trying to call games messy doesn't hold up. There are plenty of diamond in the rough games or titles that have issues but there's still some element of greatness to them. But with that said, they still have to meet a standard. I don't care how messy or flawed your game is, if I load up and the game just doesn't run any computer, then it's a broken game. Likewise, if your game is flawless but somewhat derivative, that can also be dinged as well. But again, if we start talking about what it means to make a great video game, we'll be here all night. But to wrap things up, at the end of the day, when it comes to a video game, regardless from an indie, double A, or triple A studio, you always have to adhere to a standard of quality. Now, whatever that standard is will depend on the studio and what you're aiming for, but you still have to deliver a product. And when it comes to a video game, and again, the combination of entertainment and programming, having a game have major serious flaws to it, it's not the same as going from a masterpiece film to a C or D list one. I see it more akin to a car that you get that the steering wheel doesn't work, the brake pads are broken, and let's say the engine overheats. Because at the end of the day, when you're playing a video game, you are playing a video game. You can't just skip and ignore the bad stuff when that's the things you are going to be directly 
interacting with. And no matter how nice the developers are, no matter how much work they put into it, if you can't keep to a standard of quality, you are going to be deservedly ringed and criticized for that. So, with that said, what do you think about the Oracle and this idea of messy games? And as a bit of a fun, I guess, trivia or tidbit, do you guys have games that you enjoy that still have serious flaws to them? Like I said, Hinterland is my go-to for this one, but I'm curious for what you guys think. Well, with that said, thanks so much for watching. If you have a suggestion for a future vlog, let me know in the comments below. But otherwise, thanks again, and I will catch you all next time.